You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. I'm joined here by Brad Hunt. And today's episode is with our friend from Graxaw Game Bags, Graxaw Boot Dryers, and Graxaw Other Stuff. Yeah. Austin Bernsketter. I think that's how you say his name. It's like <laughs> German or something. Uh, the man's a genius. He's a mad scientist. He's an awesome guy. He's an inventor, entrepreneur. I think you're going to really enjoy this show. We've been using his game bags for years now. Yeah. They're the orange, neon orange ones that we Same use. Same with the boot dryers. We've been using the boot dryers. He came out with some new and uh, improved products. Uh, well, new and imp- he, he improved the existing products, and then he's come out with some new ones. Yeah. So we get into that in this episode. We ran into him at the Western Hunting Expo this past February. And Austin's just a cool dude. We would love to uh, rope him into more work with us because yes. we really think he's got a lot going on. He's we. I mean, I remember when I was voicing the need for a boot dryer and no one had one, not a backpacking type version. Dude, within days, we had a setup from from him, which has gone through various iterations to now a pretty solid product. Yeah. And still, to this day, I have not seen someone come out to rival that product, which is great for, for Austin because he seems to be the only game in town. Mm-hmm. We love the boot dryers at this point. Um, I just think we hit we hit a niche in this space. Uh, we, we, we took what was a definite need, and he developed a solution – and then we were able to bring it to you guys and ourselves benefit from it. And yep. man, especially late season or wet hunts, boot dryers are money. Yes. But he improved them. And he's going to talk about them on this episode, what he did with them to uh, grow them up to what he's got now. He also talked about the game bags. And we get into that, why they're good, what's different about them. We get into some discussions there um, and some updates he's made because they've gone through iterations uh of of improvement over the years but i mean basically you can have like a little bag about the size of a pop can with six game bags with six games that can do a whole elk Mm -hmm. and are strong enough to hold all of that meat in there and we just love him we just love the guy who owns it and now is your chance to meet him if you haven't already or heard him on another show because the guy is awesome. Can't say enough nice things about him. It's just his little humble business mm-hmm. with uh, and his <laughs> wife, like yeah. probably going, "What are you going to invent now, honey?" Yeah. But you're going to get to know him on this show. Really love the guy. Uh, he also came out with these. What does he call him, Brad? He has the rack and the claw. The claw is for deer skull, like uh, euro mounts. And so it, it's pretty cool. So he has these. You know, he's. Again, his mind is a little different than mine and, and perhaps yours. He he looks yes. at things and he thinks of ways to engineer products that meet a need that solve problems. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is – I've got it in my hand for those that are watching the, this podcast. Um, this is the one for a deer. That one's the deer, I believe. The yep. deer mount. Yep. Uh, goes into some detail of why it's different, how it's unique, how it was built. And uh, why it's why it's cool. Yep. And you're gonna like it. Check it out. And uh, it's it's so funny because we know of other products out there that are supposed to accomplish that. what this accomplishes, yeah. and yet it doesn't. They don't. There's like little details they they just leave off. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they, it's they so get, simple. It's so <laughs> simple, but it it satisfies uh. um such a problem that we all are familiar with Mm -hmm. so i've got all sorts of wiring solutions and screws i put into things and when when austin just comes out with done this perfect here you go this new tool it won't move it won't swivel anymore yeah it's pretty cool so check that out and um if you like what austin has support him and support us use the code gritty over at Graxaw and buy all the stuff and also there are other products coming down the pipeline that are revolutionary. Absolutely. That he won't let us talk about. In fact, this podcast really should have gone out in February, but he just wants to get them all just right before the podcast yep. go and out. He's like, I got to get them ready. So uh, he has inventory now and he is ready to go. So we're eager to get the show out because we're already into June. Mm-hmm. But 
Uh, there's more products coming down the line, so keep your eye out. We're we're going to be announcing those as soon as he can get them all finished. Yep. By the way, the boot dryers are amazing. The new version we've been running those. You got to check those out. He'll show them up on this video yes. today. I got them sitting back here somewhere in the office. Yeah. They're they're nice. I I did them in the gear dump as well. Yes, and I used them like I'd say on this last, this previous spring hunt. I mean, walking in, you were gone. I was walking in and it was, it had rained like crazy. So I had, I just said, heck with it. Didn't wear my yep. gaiters, didn't wear my rain gear, just went in soaking wet. I started fire, put my boot dryers in there and literally just sat there and let my boots dry within an hour, hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Cause they were like, as I got to Mark, I dumped water out of my boots. Yeah. And it dried them out. Those fans are powerful. In the yes. spring like that, you don't even need a fire. You can just use the sunshine. Correct. But you'll have you're hard pressed to get a full grain or other leather or insulated boot or any of that stuff to dry even in the sun. Yes, if you don't have a fan. And this setup is money. It's yes. just simple. It takes very little power with the no dark power, energy almost. and yep, super lightweight. So check it out. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget about our partner over at Stealthy Hunter. If you need some CBD oil products, some um, uh, supplements fish oils uh they got a little bit of everything bone over broth, there everything. bone broth they got some food supplements as well so check that out and uh also check out mountain ops if you need a little pick me up check out the ignite there's some new flavors over there the and new hydrate they have the new hydrate drinks yes in fact so i've been good. mixing the mountain ops hydrate with the stealthy hunter e-charge mm -hmm. and getting a nice little mixture so yes. check that out uh both of the products over at each partner use the code gritty and uh, it helps us keep doing what we do, and you'll get a discount. And I think that's it for, for now. Hope you enjoy the show. Um, check out Austin's stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Stay gritty. All right, folks. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. And today, my guest is Austin <laughs> Burnsketter. Yes, he said it right. 100%. Yeah. Austin Graxaw. Austin Graxaw Burnsketter. No, we, Graxaw. We, we is... finally meet in person. We've <laughs> talked. We've texted. Yes. First time in person. Have you you well, guys have today. you guys have heard about our uh, our Gaxaw game bags? We talk about them. We they're in every film and so on. Okay, Austin is the uh, genius <laughs> behind these little orange bags. Okay, so, they were so it's, complicated. It's yeah, it dude, was such I mean, a remarkable product that you brought to the dude, table it, at night. I have to yeah, I have to check my <laughs> ego. I'm like Elon Musk is a big deal, but I mean. <laughs> Come on, I made an orange game bag. That's right. I mean, watch <laughs> out. I love it. I love it, though, because uh, it is more innovative than it looks. Um, we met because, how did we meet? Uh, I think it was, I know. Did I, was it through Ryan? Yeah, so, yeah, you want the long version? Yeah. yeah like, so, like, I, like, I went, I went hunting, and I went hunting, and my first elk, kind of, I think, was like 2015 or 16, right? A couple years after my wife and I got married. And I brought pillowcases. Like it seems like every first time, Midwestern especially mm. Hunter does. It's like what in the Midwest? That's when people go. They're, they're just ghetto. Everything's <laughs> ghetto. So, uh, you know, I have a Jan Sport and pillowcases. Yeah. And I got my butt whooped. But I got into elk and I had for these, your game bags. Yeah. It was, well, I had pillowcases. Yeah, that was my yeah. game bags. And so I'm like, man, I carried these around for seven days, and that was just my whole backpack and mm -hmm. pounds. And so I went out the next year, yep. and I uh, I built my bags in the meantime. So I built these bags and they were pretty similar to those. And, uh, I took them out and I killed a good bull with my bow and I, they fit and everything was perfect. And I'm like, dang, these actually worked and they weighed almost nothing. And, uh, so I, a little time passed. Lampers had, I don't know, a couple thousand followers or something. I don't know. Yep. Five. Yeah. He was, he was brand obviously new. all, he was brand yeah. new, but like he was posting these pictures of these giant rosies and stuff. I'm like this guy, I need to get this guy yeah. my bags. So I DM'd him and uh, he DM'd back and gave me an address. I shooted him a bunch of bags, shot him a bunch of bags, and uh, he used them. But months went by, didn't hear anything, as Ryan will do. <laughs> I didn't bother him. I'm like, he'll probably throw them away. <laughs> months went by, he posted a picture of a coos deer with this bag on its head. And my wife was like, you need to reach out to him. I'm like, ah, we'll see. So she messaged him or commented or something and said, hey, are those our bags? And he wrote back, yeah, they're awesome. I've used them on. And then it's Lamper style. Oh, yeah, I used them on three elk, four deer, <laughs> two bears. It's like, it's like, they're great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, also, can you send me some more? Because I'm going on a hunt with Brian Call. And I'd been listening to you for years before that, yeah. a couple years. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I sent him a couple more sets, and then you used them, and boom, there you go. Divine well, intervention, I, baby. It was Yeah, it was I went beautiful. on my first hunt with Ryan and uh, shot some bears. And we strung them up in your in your game bags. And I'm like, whoa, first of all, these are like the size of a pop can. 
you know, when they're all small, yeah, they don't weigh them. anything. And uh, and I was skeptical on what they could yeah, handle. I mean, yeah, we got all the bears deboned, and then we got them up in a tree, and you got that long, long string, right? And normally we kind of have a rope and yeah. all that. Well, we just kind of got them up there and strung them up real quick with the with the rope on the bag already. Yeah, if if you're not in grizz country, you don't need to hoist them. You just hook them over a limb. Yeah. yeah. And so we got them up there and that wind was blowing and it was cooling the meat and everything. And I'm like, they were easy to see. I'm like, hey, these are pretty sweet, super strong. So then we started running them on more hunts and more hunts. And uh, and then I remember getting some kind of reach out from you. Like you t- contacted Brent, my brother Brent or mm-hmm. something like that. And you're like... <clears throat> Um, you guys are selling a lot of these game bags, uh, or, or it was, people were saying to us, where do you get the game bags? And I'm like, I don't, I don't think you had a website. Or- I had a website, dude. Okay. <laughs> we can get into that. We, I ha- we'll get into define, this. We'll get into it in a minute. Define Look, website. Dude, I had a website. <laughs> it was made on Wix, still is, but it's improved. <laughs> but yes, it was very rough at first. I had well, rough. Dude, dude, I had one product. And hey, they- I can't talk. Have you seen the gritty store? It's awful, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Dude, I, Yours is better. I bought a, I bu- it is better. It is Dude, better. I bought a gritty hat when you first came out with them, not out of pity for your product <laughs> and your company, out of pity for your site. It is all, it's worse than mine. It's bad. So, yeah, my site, uh, I mean, to my my excuse, my credit, whatever you want to call it, I had one product, my game bag. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, Graxon, like, I had to make all these pages to even get Google searched because you have to have multiple pages and all uh-huh, this stuff. Uh-huh. And it's all just like directing to one product so it was, it was kind of a rough go but that's what i had and uh and yeah like you were saying i reached out to you guys because yeah. i was getting a lot of interest i'm like hey man do you want to do something because you're giving me a lot of business and i want to like, yeah give give something back because i'm i mean i'm not getting anybody without you so and i was like let yeah let's do that so we started working together got a code if you use the code gritty at graxaw you save and from there the relationship has continued to grow because you are also you were also the premier boot dryer bra- boot dryer Dude, producer in the West. Do not tell that to Pete. <laughs> the, the, it won 10 AC. Dude, I'm gonna yeah. get I'll, I'll get killed for that. No. Maybe the portable version, yes. Look, Pete, Pete has nothing on you. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I mean, just a product that's been around for 60 years. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> Pete's fine if you're a if you're a sissy hunter that yeah, that, that does hunts it, from home. That man. hunts yeah, like a trailer or you know, but yeah. for us guys that carry camp on our back, mm-hmm. you've got the boot dryer. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit because you you have a new version. Yeah. So because um, the old versions have gone through various iterations from from ghetto to ghetto <laughs> blaster to, <laughs> to we are, ghetto master blaster. Yeah. yeah now Dude. we're like now we're actually in the realm of this guy looks like he knows what he's doing. Barely, but yeah, I'm faking it, you know, but no, yeah, the first one, again, it was a, you said on some podcast, like, uh, man, I hate my feet always wet. You're always talking about your sweaty hobbit feet and all yeah, this. Yeah, I had been saying to people, look, I don't understand. And I had looked all over the internet for these. I'd found some things that kind of were boot dryers, but I wanted a portable boot dryer because not, yes, I have sweaty feet. Yes, when that giant bull walks out, the adrenaline spikes, and I gush water into my shoes. Brian doesn't breathe hard. He sweats hard. <laughs> I, my feet and hands go into like pools of water. And when you're wearing a super insulated boot yeah. on a 20 degree or 10 degree hunt, sometimes dropping below 10 degrees, negative five, you're like, you get sweaty, sweaty, wet feet. And you're out there for 14 days. It's undryable, pretty much. It's undryable, especially because the boots are insulated, right? Yeah. And they're full grain leather, usually. And you're, you can set them right on your stove, and the outside's 250 degrees and melting and cracking your leather, and they're insulated with 400 grams, and the inside's ice cold and wet. And the new ones I have are 800 grams. Yeah, <laughs> even worse. There's no way to heat to get the hot inside warm. So it was a major problem, and a lot of dudes, and I, this got me into trouble, in uh, British Columbia, <clears throat> I put my boots. You gotta. So let's back up. Let's say you're not 
you're not awesome like me and your feet don't sweat <laughs> like like mine. So you're a normal person. <laughs> yeah, so you're more normal. No, actually, do you know how many people come to me and say, I have feet just like yours? The, Brent says Dude. it's hy- 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 hyper hydrosis. Yeah, man. I, you can call it what you want. All I know is feet only is getting big right now. <laughs> and look, man, you don't have to you don't have to violate too many rules to just post pictures of feet, Brian. You mm, might consider it. Yeah. <laughs> they're perpetually moist. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it's full, so funny too, because my wife has feet as dry as the as the Sahara Desert. What about your poor children, man? They're is like there somewhere in the Suzanne's, middle ground. You have to grind them down with a grinder. <laughs> they're like bone dry. <laughs> When I was in high school, Birkenstocks were cool. That's how old I am. They're dude. They're well. They're they're just now getting cool in the Midwest. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they had the cork. Yeah. Bottom, oh, yeah. you know. And I'm like, I need some of those. I got a pair of Birkenstocks. I think I was in eighth grade, tenth grade. I don't remember. Those things lasted about two months before they were so soaked with grime and sweat and sticky and it's gross. Swollen. And <laughs> my feet were perpetually cold because they're wet and getting air blown on them all day long. Like they're wet all the time. Like they never don't sweat. They're wet now. <laughs> and I'm like, it's so uncomfortable to walk around without socks on. Cause what makes the moisture away? Oh, it just yeah. like, and just you just get there. rashes. Yeah. And- I'm like, Birkenstocks suck, yeah. and they started to stink. And classmates oh, yeah. were like, "What does that smell?" And I'm thinking, "It's my, uh, it's my tasty white feet." So oh, what happened was that was a real problem. But then let's say you don't have. Let's go back to you don't have weird feet, okay. wet feet, sweaty feet. You still cross rivers. You still cross creeks. You still slip often at the and start that, of trailheads. You have to cross a creek c- completely. Sometimes you have to cross four. Yeah. You know five you know, drainages to get in. And uh, once your boot is wet, it's wet forever in the back country. More or less, yeah. Unless you get a very hot, sunny, windy day. Some people disagree, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, talking about wearing a Laponia. I'm like, that's not the same thing. There's no insulation. It's a thin boot. It's like a tennis shoe. Yeah, you could dry it out with just a stove and put the boot up in the in the in the rafters mm-hmm. in a teepee, and you can dry it out. You're not doing that with a well insulated full grain leather boot or a scarpa or something like that. A crispy wild rock. It ain't happening. It's not going to get dry in there. And in the meantime, you're going to damage the hell out of the leather. Yeah, trying to get it hot enough. Yes. So I kept running into this dilemma, and I had a pair of these boots, brand new f- from Crispy on this hunt slipped into this creek i had sweaty feet to begin with but broke the ice walked across it gators were garbage (laughs) they were were sitka gators at the time (laughs) damn they're still garbage (laughs) and um there's there's things that sitka makes that i've that i love don't buy the gators they're garbage and uh when i slipped in there the water came in filled up the boot with water so Adam Greentree was with me and uh, I had taken the boots and put them up above the stove and I was going to, I knew the dilemma. Could I try to get these things somewhat dry? Cause I still had 10 days in BC and it was zero degrees outside. And that's when you're riding horses, right? Yeah. Oh, and riding yeah. horses in wet. Makes your cold, feet already like in a weird spot. Pin- Dude, riding horses is horrible in the cold. Oh yeah. And uh, cause you're up there where the wind is just hitting on them. I don't know what it is. Um, and you're not walking. So yeah, the blood just, isn't flowing. It's just cold. You're just, it's just my feet got cold. I got nerve damage on that one. The toes. Still? Uh, six months later, I could start to feel my toes. But it, for six months, it's a long time. It's gone. So then, you know, I'm going through this journey and I'm like, this is stupid. And so Green Tree, I fall asleep. He gets that fire going to 110, <laughs> 100,000, 6,000 Kelvin. That's what it was. Something hot enough to turn the pipe red. Yeah, Brian building it like an Aussie. And uh, yeah, and that room was hotter than Hades. And my boots were right above the stove, like right there. They shrunk so <laughs> tight. Oh, dude. So tight. Oh, dude. And then so they're tight and wet. That's super cold. So feet. the outside was shrunken like they were damn they were ruined forever they they went from so wet to so 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 hot they just shrunk yeah so now they're squeezing the blood flow (laughs) in my feet and the inside never really got that dry yeah 
the rest of the trip I was done for. My feet were just wrecked. Uh, I couldn't keep them warm. I kept having to pull low, pull get off the horse, try to warm them up, hike some. It was miserable. The whole trip was miserable, completely uh, miserable. So I came back. I talked to you, and I had tried to find some kind of portable boot dryer. Now I knew I didn't need heat. I got heat. I have a good source of heat. It's like a convection oven, you know, inside a yeah, TV. And, and heat is such a draw of energy. You you can't use like you, you got to use wood for it. You need the beat to use from wood. You can't be using your power for heat in the backcountry, in my opinion. Ex- in most cases, it's just too much juice. Exactly, because yeah. there were some companies who sold like a heater element. Yeah, that goes in your boot. Yeah, that's and for then like it, ski boots, and yeah. also had a fan. Mm-hmm. And it, but. But it so would use draw. so much electricity. Yeah. It wouldn't, it, it was, it was a, it was, so I was sitting there going, I just need a fan. Can I not find a fan? Can I not find something to dry these boots out? So I, I pitched this dilemma to the audience and I, and I talked about it on a podcast. And then I had a bunch of people mail me <laughs> prototypes of awesome. boot dryers, all kinds of, Oh, I bet it was something. All <laughs> kinds of designs. Lollipops and toothpicks. <laughs> yeah, and some of these were pretty good. They just were heavy, yeah. you know? Some of them were like, you've never backpacked before. Yeah. Like, this is this is not, uh, no, this isn't going to work. We went around and around, and I just kept saying, "We, you called me, didn't you? Uh, yeah, you were Brent. Whoever, yeah, I talked to one of you. I said, I might have texted you, yeah, and I said, Brian heard the podcast. I'll have you... I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I could. I'm like, I'll have you a pair by next weekend. I think you dropped in like midweek, and I was yeah. like, I'm getting him a pair by next weekend. So that was that's yeah. And then they showed up, couple, and then a they couple, said gritty on them. They did, didn't they? <laughs> Green and gritty, didn't they? Yes. And I'm like, huh? Now these didn't weigh a thing. They didn't weigh a thing. And about three ounces. Three and and they ounces. and they and they and they ran on that power source, the dark energy, for ages. So, all cobbled together wiring and yeah, slices yeah, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is this is it. This is this is the thing. Why why has not somebody done this? So uh then we started using them and I think I had like the only pair for a little bit and then and then over the last few years you have sort of morphed them and everything and I keep waiting. I keep waiting for someone to come in and try to steal the the space and copy what you've done. And uh, so far, you might know of somebody who has. I don't. I don't no, know bro, of anybody. I, I don't, dude. So you're you're you 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 filled a ni- a niche that no one went for. Yeah, people ask me. They walk by. And they're like, "Did you come up with this?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen it. So, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not that complicated. You know, it's it's basic. But, it, man, but you have to. You're right. You have to have backcountry hunted because if you didn't have that experience. Every design is garbage. It has to be, yeah. So, so let's I, talk about yeah. This when I when I made iteration. it, so well, <clears throat> I knew from the beginning design it had to be under five. Like it needed to be five ounces, six ounces, or less, or it's too much weight penalty. Like right off the bat, if it's starting to get to a half pound or something, like it's too much. Like yep. it because it's 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 not it's not for every situation. It depends on the hunt and all that. So I knew if it weighed too much, people would just leave it behind. Then I knew if it drew too much power, people would leave it behind. So I went through a lot of deciding of, I made the fans bigger, I made I had wider blade fans, uh, increased RPMs, all this stuff, but everything would draw more power. I settled on this fan because it's the pretty much the perfect size to fit in a boot. It moves just enough CFM to actually get air in the boot, and it only uses a watt and a quarter, watt and a half, which your iPhone uses four times as much act when it's actively charging. So... All things being equal, if you get, you know, I don't know, it, it, a 10,000 milliamp battery, you know, you could leave these things plugged in for days and days and days, and you're not going to need to. But I had to have that power consumption down so low, because imagine, you got one bar left on your dark energy, and that's all you got, 
Yep. And you got your phone with on X or go hunt maps or whatever you got. In reach. In, yeah, in reach. I you're, need a drop. I need a helicopter. You're I picking. Pair, yeah. If you know what you're doing, unless you're at right outside your back door, you're picking your mapping software or your emergency software to charge every time over something that hogs power. That's why I had to make it light. Use little power. And that is true. And, and, and that just makes sense to begin with. But I'll say that having the solar panels. Yeah, that's a different. The last year and a half or so, it completely changed our whole system now. It's that yeah. it's like that invention actually being effective and working, mm-hmm. even on a cloudy day. To to still good getting enough. still getting sixty percent. Holy so. moly! Like I'm watching movies now. <laughs> yeah, I, I could. You're watch, not supposed to say that. I can limit myself. I could limit myself. Well, I watch. You're edu- hiking. You're I hiking watch, all day and night. I watch dude. how to hone elk movies yeah, and stuff, cool. like really educational stuff. Yeah, you and Lampers are watching spiritual. Step <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but no, we 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 we're very much. We use more power than we ever did in the past mm-hmm. because why not? We we have a pol- or a solar panel that can juice us up almost yeah. every day to full power on every device. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but I still want something that's efficient. You know, you get a, I still want something that's really efficient battery yeah. usage. So here you, you go. You don't need a, you don't need a hairdryer. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, got a new box design and everything. Nice. Um, so that Brad's way. supposed to be here, like filming all that B roll, but he's got these three hoodlums over there. Uh, you see his kids, they'll break something soon. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So the new design, uh, the old design, it had an open top and it was super light. This is still super light. It added about an ounce. But now these orange housings right here, they're injection molded in the US. It's a two piece. I get the molds. I take the fan, insert it, clip the top on the snap fit top. It's got built in strain relief on these cables. So you can't damage the solder joints inside the fan where the bearings are. That cable is solid. It can't go anywhere. This which does, was actually a problem. Yeah, they 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 were zip tied, which is proper strain relief, but you could still damage. Like there was a uh, unjacketed wire coming out of the old version, like a very small section, which is it's 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 ugly and unprofessional. So I fixed that. Um, but with this new piece like this, the only way you can damage this is if you would operate it after it's soaked in water and it shorts, or you jab a rock or stick in the blades, but. You could drive a truck over this. I mean, you you cannot break that housing. I like this. Um, is this an extension or yeah? What, it com- and it comes with a three foot extension cable. This is money. So that's all you need. And so, if you need a six foot, we thought about offering it, but six foot is just a lot more weight. And you really don't need it that often. So because this have the this foot. was one of the problems, right? That I'd run into without an extension cable. Yeah. You get it into the boots. We put it. I like like with the Peaks TP. It's got a cross member with the truckers that go across. And it's got a head net or like a net up in the canopy. I can set my boots up there in the canopy on their side and just stack them. Mm-hmm. Put Brad's boots or Ryan's boots right next to them. They're in the very peak. They just sit there like like they were cubby holes and made for And when the fire's boots. rolling, that thing's 120 degrees up there. Totally. And then <laughs> I can take these boot dryers and I just put them right into the boots. Yeah. And then I throw that dark energy or whatever battery pack you have on there boom and but what i was running into was sometimes i needed this cord longer to really mm-hmm. get to the dark energy yeah especially when i was hanging it before i got the peaks shelter design kind of we got that dialed we would in a seek especially you can't do that so we would use a well we'd use usually a tripod yeah. So I show people how I would take the tripod and build like a hanger tree. Yeah. And then I would uh and then I would I would I would get there and I would put it in the the boots on the tripod or I would sometimes string a tripod put a string between yeah, two yeah, tripods yeah. or a trekking or pole. Yeah, or like your liner tie outs or whatever. I deck duct tape trekking poles to two tripods so I had a clothesline because yeah. I couldn't I couldn't hang it from the shelter structure itself. Yeah. But now that with the Peaks design, I don't have to do any of that. It's just ready made for just stowing and putting stuff up yeah. in the canopy. Yeah. And if you, uh, one way I, I have done it is my, the Solomons I wear have a loop on the back. Lots of boots do, you know, like they have the little tongue loop. Yeah. And uh, I just take a carabiner, slip it through there. So I got them both hooked. Oh, yeah. I take a little piece of string, tie it around twice the slip knot, pull it tight and clip it on the string at the top of the tent. 
you know. Yeah. So yep. gotcha. that's one that's one way to do it. And that'll that's that's the biggest factor of increasing your speed of drying though. If you have a hot tent and you put that thing high, I mean it's no time. I do like the extension though, because the dark energy falling. Yeah. I just it's it's happened to me a few times and as soon as it falls, it comes unplugged and it lands yeah. on the stove. Yeah, it's not good. And <laughs> I'm open to suggestions on, I include the three foot. I'm open to getting a custom cable line. It weighs even nothing. Doing a six, even doing a six foot. I've thought about doing six foot. I still can. I mean, no, these I are think... shipping soon, but I just, I don't know. Six foot's pretty long. You have a lot of excess in a teepee because usually your teepee, you know, you're probably only putting it five foot high. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's. I would think that right there gives you plenty of room to like deal with that. You know, I mean, sometimes Austin, as I think about it. <laughs> A little taller, a little longer than this would be better. Like, cause sometimes you're committed. If you, if you, yeah, you need your boots in the canopy because that's where they're going to be warm, right? So you get them up there, and but I want to use my dark energy to run my boot dryer and, and also something else. So you don't want it up on your boot. And also watch Indiana Jones. Uh, you know, I'm old school. Course. I'm old Temple school. Temple of Doom? Or Temple which, of, nah, that's a scary one, dude. I, that, that's, Raiders I of the Lost Ark, Raiders man. Lost the OG that's pretty kind good. of stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you if you get that up there, if, it's nice if it could go all the way to my sleeping bag. Yeah, I can still change that. That's easy. Yeah, I wonder. Because I actually think that would be sweet. Um, yeah, because I don't know when this is dropping, but I'm shipping these, the first ones, after the expo. So we put ordering on hold for a long time till I got my mold finalized. And uh, when we get back, we're shipping them. So I'll have some time. I can uh, I can get some six I, footers ordered. Uh, Brad told me he saw you stomping on these. Yeah. And you, and you can't break them? No. I think you could drive. I haven't done it yet. You could for sure do a four-wheeler. I think I'm going to drive my, <laughs> my rice-burning Toyota Tundra over them. I don't think they'll Ooh, break. They won't break, man. Nice. There's no, it's the perfect structure to take load. And the fan itself still performs the yeah. same way? Yeah. Same fan. Same fan. What they they feel like they might have had a weight increase? Yeah, a little over an ounce, about an ounce. Okay. They're four. Uh, it's about four and a half or four point five, four point seven ounces somewhere in there. You know how many people I run into that have these? No, but I've been running into people that have told me, and I'm like blown away. You know, like yeah, Dennis like, here at Initial Sense, like, oh, dude, I had your first version, blah blah blah. Like they're incredible. I'm like, geez, man, that's that's like, crazy. I, There's some hardcore dudes over there. I talk to people all the time, and they're like, man, I, I can't leave these <laughs> behind, you know. And one of the questions that I get asked, like when I'm on a hunt, who bought the who brought the boot dryers? Because a lot of times you just need one between three guys, because it only takes about. 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the heat. In the hot tent, yeah. In the hot tent to get to get your boot to dry out, especially we typically use sheep feed in insoles on almost every hunt. Pull them out. You pull those out. Yep. They dry they they're a little sweaty, right? They dry out, but you throw these into the boot. 15 minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. dry. Yeah. And then it's like I hand them over to Ryan and he does his. And Ryan doesn't need them cuz he doesn't sweat, but um one of he the He did I don't know what he did with them, but he did. Ask he does me, use them. He asked me for a pair not long ago. And well, I was, when we cross rivers in Alaska, yeah, like the whole time, it's like, it's like, hey, we're gonna cross a river and we're not taking the gators off. Yeah. We're in hot pursuit. Let's roll. Let's okay? go. Kill that did you giant see that moose? moose? You know? Oh my gosh, dude! So we had a- my wife didn't know what species of animal it was. <laughs> Ryan texted me that picture and uh, I showed her, and she goes, "What is that?" I said, "You, you don't know what that is." She goes, "No, <laughs> I said, it's a moose. <laughs> it, it it's is a gargantuan a, prehistoric yeah, beast. Man. It's so awesome." But the tundra too, it just got mud, and and we wore the uh, we wore our boots a few times in the in the hunt, and then just ended up with wet feet. We also blew up rafts and just hot footed it, got wet sacrifice the uh comforts to get the moose down uh and then when we cleaned it we were just standing in like mud puddles knee deep you're not moving that moose to dry ground no. it's just there no it's there so we ended up with wet feet but we're the whole time every on every hunt we're on we're like who cares chris tobias sheep shape alaska up there with us on that hunt dude that guy is like who cares? I got boot dryers. Everywhere he goes, it's just like he walks through <laughs> That's stuff. That's awesome. Thanks, Chris. Just gets Appreciate wet, that. gets soaked. Then That's he just awesome. throws them in and dries them out. That's awesome. So Yeah. And it's, it is a comforting thing to know that if I've got these and I got a hot tent 
It doesn't matter if my boot, it's temporary. The wet yeah. boot thing is simply temporary. Yeah. And uh I do want to be I do want to be 100% honest like I like to undersell over deliver. I sell fireworks back home. I try to always do that for people. Yeah. You tell them it's the best firework ever and it's a dud. Well, it's not good. <laughs> so, they do have limitations. Like yeah. It, I don't bring them like this last year. I Wyoming mule deer hunted. It was early season and I was at 10, 5, 11. I was in a cloud the whole time. So, and I didn't have a stove. So if you have, you're in a cloud and you don't have a stove and it's 90 plus percent humidity all day and night in your tent, you're just pushing wet air through it. And that's about the, that. And if they get completely soaked and it's 10 degrees and you have no heat source and there's no sun, anything, and you're just blowing air through it, it can sometimes just freeze your boot faster than drying. Yeah. But those are about the only two situations where it's not that effective. And that's- I almost can't tell you the last time we ever hunted without a stove and teepee. Oh, I mean- yeah, We're so nice. soft with yeah. that now that we even yeah, use dude, it in your September. Your skin's even looked a little more supple, we, we, dude. You, you've we lost even, the touch. We even use it in September. Like It's like spring bear. We always like, should we leave it? It's like, why though? Yeah. You're talking ounces, you know, like uh, between the group of us. Yeah. One between a group, especially. Yeah. Cause it doesn't take much time. So yeah, it's totally doable. Like two pounds. The stove is two, two and a half pounds. Why would I, how could I leave a two and a half pound uh, teepee behind or stove? Like, for the doesn't gift, make sense. The gift of warmth and life. Yeah, it's too comfortable. It's too nice. So I end up uh, always taking it, and always, uh, always. So I always have heat. It's almost yeah. never. But yeah, it would not. Doesn't really work if there's no heat. Yeah, not not near as well. Or it, it works if you're wet and it's fifty degrees. You know, yeah, above freezing. Once you start I getting have, below freezing, it's... I have been where it's hot day, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and my boots are wet. Like we cross a river, like with Pedro, mm -hmm. and Pedro gets wet because Pe that's what that's what clumsy you guys sabotage that's what him. clumsy Spaniards do because he listened to you and got yeah, betrayed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but you could in a spring day like that, you could set those out, put those in there while you're yeah. glassing for three or four mm -hmm. hours, and they could they could dry it out because it's it's hot, it's a hot day. Yeah. But yeah, without heat, it's just a fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you're at home and you want to clean your boots or something and you get the inside or any shoes you got at home and you get them wet, set them by, you know, I don't know, set them by a hot heat source versus put a box fan on them. The box fan will get them dry way faster and not damage anything to them. Yeah. That's how I always dry stuff at home. Yeah. You can try yeah. that yourself, people, and see what, see what you think. But I love it. So thanks, Brian. I also had an idea to turn this into a ceiling fan. We talked about that. <laughs> yeah, dude. All right. Sorry. That was on locals, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I really want a ceiling fan now. Can we not turn this into? Yeah. There, I, need to, I need to look into it. And, you... and uh, at first, you're like, I don't know if they, they have enough uh, CFM. CFMs, yeah. like enough power to push the heat down, right? Yeah. That's, that was the dilemma. So Brad and I are like, well, let me see. <laughs> so we got the stove going. We're on a camping trip, and we get up there with the fans, and we just hold them up there and point them down. And I'm like, dude, I feel it. I can feel the heat yeah. coming down, and it definitely works. Uh, it's not overpowering, but yeah. it yeah, definitely I, moves the air. Yeah, I remember when you asked me that. I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll have to look into that. Because look. We got, dude, we got other more important Look, stuff coming up, no, though. Bro. I agree, and I kind of like, well, what a dumb luxury. I won't even use this thing to, uh, like, because <clears throat> traditionally what's happened is in a teepee, the, the top of the teepee can get really hot, and then as you're laying down low, you can be really cold, like yeah. colder yeah. down low. And it's like, man, it would be more efficient if you could circulate that heat so it's evenly distributed throughout the teepee. The fans do that in a small TP like the the peak solitude. It does, yeah, like a two man accomplish it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you're in a big eight man or something. Nah, nah, no, nah. too much. But that little that little one where that's typically the size of Cimarron, the solitude. That's what Ryan and I are using, Brad. Um, yeah, just have Brad fan you guys. I mean, you're close to that point, right, Brad? That <laughs> <laughs> the issue I have though is uh, so I like that, but we kind of accomplish that just by having a bigger stove. Yeah. 
we kind of bumped up our stove sizes across the board, just one incremental size. It adds like four ounces more or five to the overall weight, maybe oh, yeah. less, but it, it you increases can, the BTUs by like insane Yeah, and levels. you can actually hold wood for 30 minutes rather than five. Yep, that's nice it's too. It's so worth it. That's nice. And bigger for logs, fatter logs that burn longer through the night. So anyway, yeah. that was a tangent. But someday. Yeah, someday we'll come It's not up. just gimmicky. <clears throat> We'll come out it's with Brian's actually, ceiling fan. Yeah, yeah. because if you had that peak center pole and then you put like, you know, the carbon pole and you put like a little, adi- just, a little, little ad- just a little clip on a little adapters little clip hold and it's like, and you're turning the fan in different directions. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Okay. It, doesn't yeah, yeah. it sound I could, sexy? Yeah, I could get I could get a mold design of some little clip. Probably pretty easy. I just you, have to get the dimensions of the peak. Yeah, pole. you lean back and you watch some old meat eater reruns and you're just like in the <clears throat> ceiling fan, hot house, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it could work. So that's an idea. Hey, look, yeah. nobody believed in my boot dryer except you, Austin. Believe in my <laughs> ceiling fan. <laughs> Dude, I mean, yeah, I was pretty skeptical at first. I'm like, I can't believe this is going to work, but it works and people love it. And yeah, it's, it's, it it's solves such cool. a simple problem. It, so, it solves it very, such a pro- basic problem yeah, that it's very simple. Everybody buddy. has. Yeah, it does. And I've been seeing people ruin boots for years. So this is cool the way that they've done it. Yeah. You know, so you've done it. So other products. Uh, yeah. You got some more. I got, I'm, yeah, I got, I'm hopefully a couple more new ones this year. Yep. Uh, but. In right. fact, folks, there's this one product. Stop, right? That is. Stop. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty And cool. Austin is sitting here telling me I can't tell people about it. Can't. You can't. Come please on, just don't. don't. No, come, please don't. I, got, I need more time. Here we go, boys. We'll do, we'll no. do a, we'll do a, uh, Brian will be the first access. I we'll won't. Do a podcast I you. won't talk. Hit me up on DMs, folks. No, loose <laughs> lips sink ships, dude. Anyone who gets Brian to tell them, there's a reward for it. No, no don't do it's that. really good. I'm impressed. I'm Thank super you. impressed. He's impressed at the ghetto version again. At the ghetto at the version. The prototypes. I think it's a genius product. I don't understand why. Just stop. <laughs> Others didn't come up with it sooner. That's all you need to say, Brian. Well done, my friend. Thank you. I got so a few of those So if you could coming. just hurry up and get to the uh, production As soon stage. as I come home, it's it's full bore. That's what I'm doing. It's going to it's gonna knock socks off. Yeah. It's, it's uh, as afraid. I say and get mocked for, it's a game changer. It's a rad game changer, dude. <laughs> it's a rad game changer. It's hella That's cool. That's right. Yep. So yeah. So I just came out with uh, a deer mount. So- I don't really. Need That's this. a little buck. It is. <laughs> it is. I don't even know what, what a, it is. What a I got him in Wyoming deer. this year. Um, it's a nice buck. Yeah. He is Let me see this. Nice chocolate. I was. Uh, what, what's that color from? Man, I don't know. The, they all looked like that. Some of them were even like reddish orange, almost like a like a rosy elk. What are they rubbing on, <laughs> dude? I don't know. It was. I was. Was the there rocks. a burn anywhere? Or like... Not a couple miles away. Uh, so I was after a real big. Uh, real so big sweet buck. buck, dude. Yeah, I was after a real big buck and screwed him up at forty yards. It was end of Wyoming, and I uh, took in my bow, hunted till rifle hit, kept screwing up, and uh, yeah, ended up ended up finding him. Like I think it was day nine, I shot that buck, dude. That's nice. It's handsome. Yeah, it's a handsome, it's a pretty handsome. pretty buck. Okay, what am I holding it for? You're holding it What's because. It <clears throat> You're holding it. I brought it because I I've bought a bunch of cheap Etsy deer skull mounts in the mm-hmm. past. Like I've tried everyone on Etsy. I've tried Admit Instagram it. shops. You've had a lot of skull hookers. I've had some skull hookers. I didn't want to yeah. <laughs> I've had i I've had a well, that's an elk one. I'll that's an elk story mm-hmm. about the skull hooker. I've actually never had a skull hooker for deer. Um but I went through these mounts and all these, all these like simple mounts that hid, that hid behind the head, yep. their flaw was the heads could spin. Like I have some broken rack bucks or like uh, lopsided bucks or yes. it just depends how big the center hole that one goes horn, into the brain cavity one is. One buck. That, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And this, this hole size, it varies a lot. I've measured a lot of deer and I mean, it can vary more than a quarter inch, which doesn't sound like much, but it is when you have this single prong that the head can just spin on. Yeah, yeah. So all the mounts I was running into, you'd have to jam it in this center prong. And this is an example, mm-hmm. but you jam it in this prong and then jam it against the wall to keep it from rotating. Yeah. Or okay. you'd have to position it just right and you blow on it. You know, you open a door and the thing can rotate or your kids stomp on the floor, slam a door, whatever. Like your thing can, can yeah, rotate. Yeah. So I'm like, I got to fix this. I got to do it cheap. I got to do it simple. I 
I know some American fab shops. I'm like, I'm a, I, I got CAD. I can, this is easy. I can fit, find how to do <laughs> yeah. this. So I made a few designs and I got a simple solution. It's all it is a steel plate. It's a little thicker than eighth inch. Mm -hmm. uh, it's steel. It's going to be powder coated. This is just rattle canned right now as a sample to bring to the show. But it's got these prongs on each side. You just slip it in the head and there's your head on the wall. That's it's that simple. Let me see that. Mm. We've tried it on a bunch of deer heads. It's fit small white tails, you know, yeah. tiny four corns all the way up to big muleys. Yeah, because that has been a major problem. Like people hang them on and they, they just have that center thing or they have yeah. like some kind of screw. Or, 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 or they have like the skull hooker actually just saw it as I came to the convention here or the expo. And the skull hooker has this big plaque on that back and all that. And it's like, I don't know. I, I think it's unnecessary. I don't I don't like yeah. the plaque and any of that. So uh, this also this heading, so this clean. angle. We, yeah, this angle we picked is so I haven't tried it on 180 uh, inch muley, but even if the muley swept back a little bit, this angle will should keep your rear tines from touching the wall because they don't sweep back near as much as an elk, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so if I put this flush here, I'm just curious. Yeah, it'll look just like that. So you get a even, you know, you add another thirty inches. Say you come back another couple inches, you still got clearance. Man, that's pretty sick. <clears throat> that's pretty nice. And I can adjust the angle just on the fab, but uh, I think it's a good a good spot. So will you offer it with a different angle? I've thought just... about it. I've thought about making, uh, yeah, I've thought about making this one the big buck, and then anything like under one fifty, you could make the head sit even more up. You know? Yeah. So I could change this angle from this is like because I, I know this is sixty degree. I'll just tell you this: like you learn about people's taste, right? As you do this, and what you find, like Lampers, he's not necessarily a fan of this. Uh huh. He's a big fan of this. Yep. What turns him on about the difference? I'm not sure because I kind of like this. I. I personally I, like I, I like the I like your rear tines. I like those as close to the wall as possible. That's my preference as well. Like right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's just how I like it. Uh, yeah. So but, but if it's really I, need, I back, tried to get Lampers, I need to still send him some and say, Hey Lampers, before I ship all these out, you need to tell me the best angle you think, because then I'll offer the Lampers, you know. The hundred and ninety inch you Lampers should, buck edition. He has have you ever seen his garage? I've heard it's just stacked rafters full of giant bucks. He has bucks that no no offense, but oh that, no, none taken that dude. are like way bigger than this, just cast aside in the corner of a garage or over here on a Mouse table eaten. or and then there's just they're just like crappily hung on the <laughs> yeah. wall, just yeah. screwed up there, just Yeah. I don't know, hundred of them. Yeah, we'll try and clean up his his garage there. Yeah, you could really help with that. That could. So you yeah, could that, make that that was my first instinct. I'll offer two versions. I mean, it's also a, it's a they do work, this because they're on one of those hangers that's yep. not like a grack saw. That's right, and it's called. We're calling it the claw. So yeah, it's uh, we're selling them in three packs. It's made in America, powder coated in America, and you can use the code gritty. We uh, he, these are made by Jim, like this table mount yeah. right here, and and that's the other thing. These guys making these awesome artistic mounts. This is not your artistic mount. It's not meant for that. It's, yep. you know, you kill some giant 200 inch buck and you want a beautiful mount. This is not for you. Go to one of these other guys that yeah. make these awesome mount, Iron Skull or whatever. Iron Mountain Skull yeah, hangers. I mean, so yeah. that's a, to me, it's a totally different market. I'm not, I don't want to intrude on yeah, these guys Yeah, Jim at is all. putting together like, uh, even like a, we shot those bucks in Mexico. He's like making plaques that are with the Mexico in the yeah. background. That's those a are, it's a work of art. That's beautiful. It is, but. We have like Ryan, yeah, hundred of these that need to be hanged, uh, and uh, that is the perfect solution to yep. to that situation. And it, it's going to come with two flat two washer head screws. Uh, I'm probably two inches, two and a quarters. So it'll go through your drywall, still give you at least an inch and a half in your stud, and the screw head sit flush on there, and you're done. Yeah. Then there are people who just have reported back to me. They're like, there's people who love Jim's stuff. But then there's a few that are like, I just don't like horseshoes. I don't, horseshoes aren't my theme at my house, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you get that. So this is one of those uh, kind of thing for, for that. I, yeah. I think uh, that looks great. Now, um, will this thing sag or bend? Because I've had Try and some. Try buddy. Come I, on. Like, look at these okay. steps, dude. Dude, 
he can't take enough Mexican supplements to bend this. Let's have a challenge. I, I see had, it. I've had, I won't name the companies, but I've had a few of these yeah. like this. And they, I measured them all. The they thickness. just like, they just bend. I measured all the thicknesses. That most of them are like 0.07. What does that mean? 0.07 inches of steel thickness. That's 0.135. I can bend it a little bit. Oh, come on, Brian. Can, can you? All right. Yeah. But that's more than the pressure of weight of a head. That How much you put in there? 60 pounds of force at least? I mean. Okay. Well, do I need to make it I, point I don't, one <laughs> point? I mean, geez, dude, are you going to do pull-ups on your deer one? <laughs> I don't know. All I'm saying is this I is weight. Even now, my other ones that I've had. They're like not I near said, that. No. No, no, no. They, you put them on there and you barely pull them and they just like pop metal. Just like. It's would, exactly would what it is. They're making them. As cheap as humanly possible. So, um, the, I actually want it to bend a little bit. I think if you want to adjust what, it, you couldn't could. I? Couldn't I? Couldn't you I can just take this and then sweep it up a little bit so that it, uh, so that that those antlers yeah. sit different without yeah. you like? Yeah, I mean, because Jim just bends his as well. He's like, he just tells people, and those are thick. Hey, bend it to where you want it. Yeah, that eliminates me having to have the product option. That was another you know, yeah. thing I thought about. But I think you just bend it. We all know. Yeah, he, you're so strong, you fatigued it. I just can't. <laughs> no, yeah, you can. I mean, you can you can bend it if you really try. You're right. You. Uh, That's how I want your, it. Your skull, there's no way on earth it's no. been there. No, no, no. Yeah, it's I was curious, though, because like I said, the other ones are like, they just. Yeah, I mean, you, your kid especially could, your if kid you could put bend. a big rack on it. Yeah, they would sag. And elk, those other ones, elk were not built these tough other ones, at all. They're not as this center. The center prong isn't as thick, and it's or not as, as long. wide, or as long. They're all short to save metal, and it doesn't have these two. So you have the added strength of it: longer, thicker, wider, and, and two sport. more sports. Yeah, and long screws included. Not this. We talked you about a freaking this one inch screw. We talked about this work. when you were when you were talking about making it and. uh when you went through the process and messed around with it, mm-hmm. this is a pretty elegant, and simple design. Yeah, I mean, I think it's as simple as you can make it. Why, why uh, dude? I don't know, man. I keep asking, like people, people, it's not people like, just copy everything. It's, it's not like you invented a Tesla here, okay? But I yet, I can't find <laughs> this I piece of metal. Was... I can't, I can't find what I want. Well, yeah, so I mean, often, you, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it, this did probably take. I don't know. I probably went through ten. 10, yeah. 15 revisions, you know, just so different. you're saying it's harder than it looks, Brian. It's harder than it looks to know. It's harder than it looks to make something new. But like, mm-hmm. if you know what you want, then it's not that bad. I mean, this center prong idea, this is where I got the Etsy thing is like it all. They all had that prong. And I'm yeah. just like, well, it's missing, the, in my opinion, the most important piece. And it's so easy to figure out how to make that work. Yeah. So that's what I did. I love it. Now, what about bigger animals? What about elk? Well, I don't know, Brian. I mean, we, that looks like it's going to bend. Depends how small of an elk you're killing. I mean, if you're, killing like the elk, if you're killing the elk I'm killing, you could probably just stick it right <laughs> on there. No, you can't fit elk on this design because, or anything like this. This is why a lot of companies, their elk mounts stick away out from, like, well, I'm going to say skull hooker. Yeah. Uh, I've bought a lot of their stuff. I, They have a lot of good things about them. Uh, but you have, skull hooker's idea to, was to get it off the wall. Correct. Which, which is great because it allows the lamper style, that head flat you know you get your elk head almost flat but the problem is you're more than a you're about a foot out from the wall and it it just sticks the whole thing out in the room and if you're like me a broke midwesterner and got eight Mm -hmm. foot ceilings everywhere like you just don't have good spots to put your bowl like it just it's in the room it's like Mm -hmm. it's too much and uh the elk sweep back so much so that's what they did but and they have the whole swinging there's too many degrees of freedom which means Mm -hmm. it can move too many different directions and it's not stable. Yeah, it's got this. It's got the long. Uh, the then long it's got sheet. the adjustment too yeah. on the front, so you can sweep and it back. Yeah, it's, don't don't the kill problem. Me. Don't kill me. The problem with school. okay, so they actually had they they solved a lot of problems, but they, to me, it's a uh, they understood that they're going to sell this thing mass mm-hmm. production, and it needed to be able to be shipped. Yep, and you can flatten it yep. so it's just in a thin box, which is conducive to shipping. Customer assembles it. Customer assembles it, and but the problem is, um, it's not built. It's actually kind of, to me, the benefits of, of that make it better to ship and easier to package and box and all that aren't necessarily benefits for me. Yeah, 
their benefits for them to be able to bring it to market at a decent They're, price, which I value, yeah. but to maximize revenue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maximize profit. It's, 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 uh, you know, the, it's a genius kind of thing in its yeah. way. Yeah. And I'm not but, taking anything away from that. Yeah. They're, that's, they, they, they came up with that whole idea. You know, they are probably, I guess they're the first ones to do the hook and prongs in the back yeah. of those elk skulls, I'm guessing. And I don't know. I don't know. I but, don't know. um, yeah, it just, it didn't, it didn't satisfy my needs. You know, I, and this, we just redid our house and in this room, we got this workout room. <clears throat> I had all these deer and elk and I'm just like, I got to figure out something to do with these. And the skull hookers didn't work. So, so tell me, walk me through that. The new one? Yeah. So this, uh, I'm calling the rack. And again, this is just rattle canned. This isn't the powder coated version. <laughs> I love and, your caveats. Yeah. Hey, it, folks, hey, I'm it's going to get prettier. It is. I'm, I'm being <laughs> honest, man. Uh, and this furniture is all going to be black. The production version is going to have wing nuts and it's just going to have simple nuts. So if you want it super low profile and you want to use a ratchet and a socket, you can. If not, you can just wing nut it tight. But how this works, it's got two pieces. It's going to come shipped together. It's got two pieces like this. Yep. These through holes are different than these. Yeah. The square. So all you got to do is take this plate. You can set it wherever you want to move it in or out. And you drop this carriage bolt right in. And since these are locking in on top, boom, your top's locked in. You tighten the nut, the bolt can't spin. That's why I include the wing nuts. You can do it all by hand. You don't need any tools. Gotcha. So you take that. And for most bulls, you're not going to have to adjust it at all. This plate, everything, you're just going to have to screw this in the wall with those two holes and the screws provided, and you're ready to go. So you take it. All it's going to do is you hook it on the wall. And this, I've never seen this. It hooks behind the eyes of the bull. So you screw I've this on the wall. I've never seen that. It's always through... It's always to the back. It's always to the back. They always try and there. improvise some, yeah. and try and make it work. And then this bottom plate rests on the top, the roof of the mouth. See? Yep. So what this plate does here, the secondary plate on the top, you kick it on a smaller bull. You're going to kick that plate out if you want to get the head as far angled this way, as yep. flat as possible, without With the your rear screw tines, adjustments, without your rear tines touching the wall. On Sweet. a big bull, you usually are going to have to have it almost maxed out. We're, we're actually trying it on Phil Mendoza's dad's bull. It's like a 396 euro. Dang. So that's the, we haven't had access to a euro bull that big, but we're going to test it on that and make sure, but it's worked on every bull perfect. So it's the only way, it's the only drawback of this I saw when I made it is from if you stand directly to the side and under it, you know, you have all this going on. But when it's on the wall, it's yeah, so no. tight. It's the no. tightest you can possibly get it. Man. That looks as clean. Besides, the bracket mount yeah. is so minimalistic that you don't care. Just make the screws so they're not silver. No, exactly. They're all black. <laughs> so You're done. done deal. I love it. All right. Where can people find you? Uh... Craxo.com. Where's your crappy website? <laughs> www.craxo.com. And actually now, I've done a little uh, SEO stuff even since yitterday. So if you uh, Google Graxo, it's my website should come up. Okay. So. All right. And if you go to uh, any YouTube video mm -hmm. that I make and you go to the comment or the, the description field, you'll find a link to Graxo there too. Yeah. So and, check it out, folks. Get yourself yeah. the boot dryers if you need them. If you want, like, I can't recommend them enough. If you've got a Euro you need to mount, a bull or a deer, it's hard to beat the price for what you're getting. I'm very curious to see how these are going to turn out. I think it's going to be a great, it looks like a winner. Everything, everything you've done has been great. Thanks, man. If you don't have the game bags, check those out. At some point, you're going to get some bone-in meat bags. Yeah, I've been working on it. Uh, Man, I've been dealing with sewing problems my seamstress yep. darlene she's a saint she's an awesome hard worker she's pretty much full-time for me that's all she does but i'm running into uh scaling up with that yeah. so I, i've been pursuing lots of options and trying to get other other products done but the bone in is in the works and uh i've given you guys some prototypes and I love stuff it. and I love it. And we're going to keep moving forward. We got a bunch of stuff coming out this year. And the new product, get it done already so I can shout it from the rooftops because Dude, there's better stuff than that. It's really cool. Really. Well, I'm excited. Support su support Austin if you can because uh small business up and coming. Just a just a good dude. Uh That's he's right. not a big corporate per Don't forget 
when you're big and famous and have a big, uh, you know, huge. Nah, dude, you guys, you brand. guys will be my little peon influencers <laughs> whenever I'm, you know, rolling big, right rubbing on, shoulders right on. with Cam. And- I love it. So uh, there you have it, folks. Check it out, Austin Burn Scatter. Uh, Grack Saw. Yes, sir. Great company. Great Thank job, you, man. Brian. Yeah, for and don't in. forget, use code Gritty because yes. Brian helped me get to where the business where it is, and I greatly appreciate him and Ryan. Thank you. So, Thank, Thank you, you folks. Brian. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay gritty.